Sharks are an amazingly diverse group of animals that have an especially long and fascinating evolutionary history. At many different times throughout Earth's past, certain sharks have evolved to fill the niche of apex predator, climbing the food chains of the oceans they inhabited to become truly awesome hunters of almost anything they came across. One example of this sort of shark is a genus called Cretoxyrhina, a massive top predator that lived during the late Cretaceous period and fed on all kinds of other impressive Mesozoic animals, from mosasaurs and plesiosaurs to pterosaurs and even dinosaurs. Cretoxyrhina has often been nicknamed the Ginsu shark after the Ginsu brand of knives, due to the apparently similar way in which both the knives and teeth of the shark can cut through objects with ease. And a surprising amount of detailed information is actually known about this remarkable taxon thanks to some very complete fossils that preserve much of the cartilaginous skeleton. Cretoxyrhina is classified as a member of the Lamniforms, also known as the mackerel sharks, a pretty diverse group that includes a lot of the creatures that first come to mind when you think of sharks, taxa such as the great white, sand sharks, basking sharks, and others such as goblin sharks and megamouth sharks, as well as the infamous megalodon. The genus Cretoxyrhina is placed as the only member of its own family, Cretoxyrhinidae, and contains four different species. Interestingly, it's been suggested that these taxa could be an example of something called a chronospecies. Essentially, they all represent a single lineage that slowly evolved into one another over time as morphological changes accumulated, as opposed to branching evolution known as cladogenesis. The lineage would have started with the oldest species, Cretoxyrhina raconensis, that lived around 107 million years ago, before evolving into Cretoxyrhina denticulata, then Cretoxyrhina agassizensis, which temporarily overlapped in time with the last species, Cretoxyrhina mantelli. The physical changes that occur between species are recognised in the teeth, with the lateral cusplets, the small projections to the sides of the large central projection, gradually decreasing as time goes on, while the overall tooth increases in size and robustness. As I already mentioned, despite shark body fossils being very rare due to the fact that they're constructed of cartilage, which does not fossilise as well as bone, several almost fully complete specimens have been discovered of the Ginsu shark, in some cases preserving skulls and entire vertebral columns apart from a few bones at the tip of the tail. The reason for this level of preservation is due to the environment in which they were buried. The Niobrara Formation of North America where these exceptional fossils come from are made of chalk that contains a lot of calcium, therefore meaning the softer cartilage would become calcified and more likely to fossilise. Thanks to these remarkable specimens, we can tell a lot about the anatomy of Cretoxyrhina, specifically Cretoxyrhina mantelli. The average total length of this species was about 5 metres, though particularly large individuals could probably have grown to between 6 and 7 metres. It seems likely that the overall body shape of this shark resembled the modern Great White to an extent, with a head that was quite conical and a skull with a relatively blunt snout and large orbits. These large orbits indicate good vision in the shark which would have been useful for hunting, and its jaws had an adaptation that would have allowed them to protrude forward significantly, enabling the shark to make very deep bites. The tail anatomy of these animals actually also gives us some important clues into the creature's lifestyle, with an analysis of the tail vertebrae indicating that Cretoxyrhina had a lunate or crescent-shaped tail, as well as a bend in the vertebrae leading to the tail of 45 degrees, both indicators of a fast swimming ability. There's also a fascinating suggestion that Cretoxyrhina was potentially a regional endotherm, therefore being one of the earliest examples of such animals among lamniforms. A few modern mackerel sharks are also regional endotherms, meaning that certain areas of their bodies, through the use of special systems of blood vessels that use a heat exchanging countercurrent, are able to be maintained at a higher temperature than the surrounding water. This then enables the sharks to swim more efficiently in colder waters, and since Cretoxyrhina is known to have inhabited waters that may have got to as low as 5 degrees Celsius, it would certainly have been a beneficial adaptation. The Ginsu shark also displays many morphological adaptations which indicate that this fish was a very fast swimmer, and potentially even the fastest shark we know of. It possessed placoid scales that had parallel keels with grooves between them, a clear adaptation for drag reduction that's also seen in some very fast swimming modern sharks, and as mentioned previously, the almost symmetrical tail shape and angle at which the tail vertebrae bend upwards are very indicative of an ability to swim quickly. A calculation of the swimming speeds for Cretoxyrhina put the average cruising speed of the shark at around 12km per hour, with a burst speed of 70km per hour. 
the fastest shark alive today, the short fin Mako, has also been recorded at a burst swimming speed of 70 km per hour, meaning if these calculations are accurate, Cretoxyrhina is a rival for the fastest shark known to have existed. Cretoxyrhina specimens are found all over the world, but some of the most astonishing and indicative of their behaviour have been discovered in Kansas. Many specimens of other prehistoric animals have been found that display puncture wounds inflicted by the Ginsu shark, and even embedded teeth in certain cases. Plus, there are also some likely stomach contents from the shark that demonstrate what it had been eating. As an apex predator of the time, Crotoxyrhina was feeding on all sorts of animals, including the giant predatory fish Zyphactinus, the scattered bones of which have been found in association with a Crotoxyrhina skeleton in addition to mosasaurs, with quite a few incidents of mosasaur feeding actually being known. And we can be certain that the shark wasn't just scavenging on already dead mosasaurs, since there's a preserved mosasaur tail vertebra that has an embedded Crotoxyrhina tooth which actually shows signs of healing, indicating the shark was attacking a live animal. The Ginsu shark also fed on the plesiosaurs, turtles, and other sharks that it shared its environments with, as well as consuming both dinosaurs and pterosaurs. The right ulna and radius from a small nodosaur, probably a young Niobrarosaurus, found in the Niobrara formation in 2000, preserves scratch marks and displays signs of having been partially digested. It's thought that the limb had become detached from the rest of the body when a large shark, most likely Crotoxyrhina, scavenged on the carcass of the animal after it had been washed out to sea. Similarly, a series of articulated vertebrae coming from the Hadrosaur Cleosaurus of the Niobrara Chalk in Kansas display non-serrated bite marks and also appear to have been partially digested, indicating more scavenging behaviour of a carcass washed out to the ocean, probably by Crotoxyrhina. The evidence for the shark feeding on pterosaurs is also quite remarkable, as there's a specimen of Pteranodon which has a Crotoxyrhina tooth embedded in one of its neck vertebrae. The tooth doesn't pierce the actual bone, but the fact that it's lodged right under one of the processes indicates that they didn't preserve together by chance, and that the shark did indeed bite into the pterosaur. It isn't possible to say whether this would have been an example of active predation or scavenging, but some amazing paleoart was produced based on this discovery by talented paleoartist and paleontologist Mark Witten, depicting an awesome scene of the shark taking out an unfortunate pteranodon. But despite Crotoxyrhina clearly having been a formidable predator that terrorised the prehistoric oceans for millions of years, this shark did sadly go extinct eventually. The exact reasons for why the Ginsu shark died out are not yet fully understood, though it's possible that competition from other marine predators played a part. Crotoxyrhina appears to have declined very gradually over millions of years, and seems to have vanished from different regions of the world at different times, indicating that it went locally extinct in various places before completely disappearing globally. One study found that, in the Western Interior Seaway, Crotoxyrhina would have encountered the most competition from animals such as the Mosasaur Tylosaurus, as well as the shark Squally Corax. However, they also found that this competition wouldn't have been enough for one of these taxa to have been replaced by another. But other researchers have observed that the Ginsu shark begins to decline in geographic range and total size once mosasaurs such as Tylosaurus started to radiate, indicating that there may in fact be a link between them that hints at competition being a driving force in the shark's extinction. It seems that for now though, the precise reason for Crotoxyrhina's extinction remains a mystery. Crotoxyrhina was a fascinating and fearsome beast, and shows that even during a period we think of as the time of the dinosaurs, the sharks, which had been around for hundreds of millions of years before them, were still the masters of the sea. Well, I really hope you enjoyed learning about this shark, and I hope you've been enjoying Shark Week 2020 so far. We've still got loads more great videos coming out this week, so be sure to watch out for them. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters Jan Owen, Corey Peterson, George Vojtek, Persian Boy, Mike Pace, Mayer's World, Dhruv Srivastava, Jacob Stewart, Matthias Bergscher, Nicole Bueno, Pasta, Mark Fawn, Dominic Bathy, Harry Evert, and Alex Hawke. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.